In 1957, Barbara Smith Conrad was a music student at the University of Texas who was thrust into the national spotlight. Controversy erupted when Conrad, who was African American, was cast opposite a white actor in the school's opera production. She was eventually expelled from the cast. But rather than leave the university, Conrad stayed to earn her degree and went on to a long and distinguished opera career. And her story is now the focus of a new PBS Independent Lens documentary. It's called When I Rise, and it premieres next week. And we are pleased to have her with us here on Up to the Minute this morning. Bar Barbara Smith Conrad, we thank you for being here. I watched the documentary last night, and I admit I did not know the story, but I tell you what, after watching it and hearing you, I just <laughs> want to know more. You said in this, music is what kept you alive. Is that what helped you get through this experience? Always has. I think, I think, and th I think that's true with most musicians. Mm -hmm. I came from a very musical family. It's, that helps right there. A brother who is a pro prod prodigy on the piano, a mom with a beautiful voice, a sister with a beautiful voice, a grandmother, and so on and so on. That was the community. Why did you decide to stay at UT after they removed you? from this opera, especially when Harry Belafonte, who was as big as a star as you could get yes. at that time, uh, comes forward and says, look, I am impressed by this young woman, and I will pay for her to go to any school she wants to. You decided to say, no, I'm going to stay. Why? Well, I, I went at home to speak with my parents, who some 350-odd miles away. Mm. I just needed to talk it out. But my, it's just not my nature. <laughs> I just, my father said, when I said, I, I don't, I'm not sure I know what to do, but I know what I feel. And he said, well, if you want to go, go. If you want to stay, stay. Music was your life. It was. It really was the center of it. It was everyone in your family either sang or, or played, played some kind of yes. instrument. Yeah. This music school that was at UT was a very well-respected music school, and you described in the documentary that the music school was your oasis from what were very tough times, yeah. obviously, right at, at the heart of desegregation. Do you wish having, did, did this situation, I say, did the situation ruin that oasis for you? No, just the contrary. I found, I found a whole nother world where everybody cohabitated quite easily. Uh, because, as it turns out, music school is a place where everybody is pretty much on the same page. There was no such thing. It really didn't happen until we came outside the music school doors. Do you wish UT had handled this differently? Oh, goodness, of course, mm. of course I do. Because it would have left so much more space for so many more, so, so many wonderful students across the the state. Texas is known for its music making, its, its, I mean, great jazz, great everything comes out of that state. When you went on with your life and you, you graduated from UT, yes, I did. you moved to New York, you became a big star. You sang in, uh, all over the world. You were a <laughs> member of the Metropolitan Opera. How much of that past, that painful history, how much of that stuck with you? Did you carry it with you? I took it for a while. I had to I had to fess up to the fact that I was angry because I was so busy being a warrior, I didn't have time to be angry. <laughs> um, it took a while. I got that watching this. It was almost, you know, it's a, a two-sided documentary. I'm almost looking at it like you're on the therapist's couch. Like a big part of this 50 years has been finding forgiveness, finding some peace, finding some resolution, almost like it's an emotional catharsis in your mind, and that's what we're watching play out in this documentary. Is that, is, is that about right? I think right? you're right, right on target. In fact, when, when uh, Don Carlton and Matt Hames came to New York with the film to, for me to view it, it was the first time I had shed one tear apropos this situation. In the midst of it, at some point, the tears just started to roll. And you needed that. And I really needed that. I tell you what, you said in the documentary, I do what I always do. I keep singing. 
yep. I think a lot of people would say, look, we hope you do. We hope you keep on singing. Thank you. Barbara Smith Conrad, we thank you for being with us this morning. The PBS Independent Lens documentary, it's called When I Rise. It airs next Tuesday, February 8th at 10 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to check your local listings.